With the number of women camping alone still increasing, we thought it would be a great time to look back at Girl Campers and Girl Camper Magazine, the force behind its growing popularity in female campers. This week, Michelle Fontaine sits down with Janine Pettit, the founder of Girl Campers, to find out how it all started. Next, Jeff Johnson shows us what's involved and what you should check and plan for when buying a used travel or camping trailer. Then later, we take a quick visit to the Calaveras Big Tree State Park in California and see what a great RV destination this is for the whole family. Quick note, with the recent fires in the area, do check out which areas are open before your visit. These stories and more on this week's RV Today TV. Closed and Spanish captioning where available is sponsored by Forest River. Follow the river. And we're staying at a campground called Camp Taylor in Columbia, New Jersey. And I've just bumped into someone I've been trying to bump into for a while. Janine Pettit. <laughs> I messaged Janine yesterday and I said, we're going to New Jersey to camp for our first night on our cross-country trip. And then what happened? And then I said, well, how far away are you? And you say, yeah, I'm 130 miles from Columbia, New Jersey. And I'm like, the girl campers are up here this weekend. We're having a gorgeous <laughs> fall camp out. Come on down. We'll make you feel at home. Yeah. Tell us about Girl Camper. Girl Camper is an organization that really helps women get out there. Uh, we, our tagline is we going places and doing things. But now you're looking at all the girl camping groups out there, right? Mm -hmm. There's the, the mitten kittens and the getaway gals and all these groups. And I thought, you know what? There's all these women and they're looking at all the groups on Facebook and they're going, this looks like so much fun, but how do I get started? Yeah. So I noticed that nobody was really educating women on safety with the RV. Mm -hmm. I was observing and I saw all these women just buying vintage trailers, hitching them up, no idea what they weigh, no idea the condition of them, not having them inspected, you know. And I, I'm guilty of this myself because I got bit by the bug, I got a vintage trailer. I, I drove that thing for two years, I never checked the tires once, it didn't even occur mm -hmm. to me. So I thought, I want women to do this, but I want them to do it safely. Mm -hmm. So I started creating content that had to do with the safety yeah. of girl camping. And then I started a podcast, a weekly podcast. So we've been, I just recorded episode 190, ranging in topics from what is gross vehicle weight rating mm -hmm. and why is it important mm -hmm. to how do I meet girls to go camping mm -hmm. with? Or, mm -hmm. And just interviews with women who who had the dream mm -hmm. and did it, mm -hmm. which is so inspiring to other women. So we created Girl Camper as a means for people to find other people to camp with and to mainly to just be safe, create an educational component to the whole girl camping world. Last night around the campfire, we met three ladies, three Aww. girl campers. One had a regular minivan I know who you And are. she said, I was so inspired by Janine's podcast. It's a matter of just go and do it in whatever you have. Yeah. And another one has a truck with a tent set up, planning on an RV. Yeah. It's, it's don't wait till you get the perfect vehicle. So we have just this do saying, it. there's mm -hmm. no wrong way to camp like a girl. Mm -hmm. So I don't want people to have the impression that if you're gonna be a girl camper, you've gotta have some tricked out vintage trailer with all the bells and whistles or some big class A motorhome. If you want to be outdoors, we want you to come and we don't want you to wait. Right. So this woman with the minivan you're talking about, her name is Laureen and she had written me a letter and I said, you know, she said, I, I don't, I'm raising kids. I don't have any money for a trailer. Can you um, suggest something? So I always said, you know, uh, when we host events, we always try to choose a campground in which there are cabins for rent. If there's no cabins, I said, do you have a minivan? And she <coughs> said, yes. I said, well, throw all the seats out of it, put a twin bed in it, and just come. <laughs> there's, no, there's no perfect timing. Just come. So her husband surprised her. He wanted her to do this so badly. She's just a great mom. She was also taking care of a mom with Alzheimer's. She mm. needed respite time. And there is so much in the power of female friendships oh. and just getting away for a weekend with the girls, not being responsible for feeding people, just 
-hmm. sitting around the campfire. And her husband, he's a woke guy, he got that. He surprised her and took her up to Cabela's, outfitted the whole inside of that minivan with a cotton bedding and a camp stove and an easy up. And, and she joined us and she's, she camps with us five or six weekends a year now. And it's just a great, it's a great time out. Mm -hmm. It's rejuvenating, it's restoring. Janine, I hear there's something new coming along with Girl Camper. Did a little bird tell you? Yeah. <laughs> okay, you twisted my arm. Yes, yes, yes. What I did is I took Girl Camper and we created Girl Camper chapters. So now we have the Girl Camper Front Range in Colorado and the Texas Girl Campers in the Ohio, West Virginia, New Jersey and Pennsylvania and Delmarva, Virginia, Florida. And these Girl Camper chapters are going to help mentor women in their area because we're educational. And also, they are the um, experts in tourism for their area. So if you decide, I'm going to go visit the Rocky Mountains, get onto Girl Camper Front Range, you can find out where to camp, where to rent things, where to get something repaired, all the information. And all of our girls are creating their own content and their own stories. And they're picking up the slack because I can't be everywhere. <laughs> Smart, smart. But girlcamper.com will be where all these places will be yeah. tied together. All of our Girl Camper chapters, you can get to them there. Mm -hmm. And then if you decide to go camping in that area. And in addition to telling all about um, their area, they're also reviewing gear and talking about whatever kind of trailers they tow, all kinds of great RV information as well. Excellent. Well, thank you for sharing that. Oh, yeah, it's exciting. We've been working at it a long time and it's gonna be really fun. Hey, we've covered a lot, Janine, but what's next for you? I am heading your way this year because everyone is always talking about quartzite, quartzite, quartzite. That's where mm -hmm. the whole RV world goes in January and I'm going this year. My good friends over at Lance Truck Campers, I love Lance. They are gonna give me a truck camper and I'm gonna to tool around down there. I'm gonna driveway camp at your house yes. and then hopefully I can twist you your arm and you will go with me down to Quartzsite. Oh, uh, I plan to. We plan to do a story at Quartzsite because now we can yeah. stay with the girl campers. I'm gonna take that Lance 650 on a Ford F-150 diesel and I'm gonna do Quartzsite in that whole area. Solo woman, don't you love Solo it? Solo woman traveler. Love it. I do things. Thank you, Janine. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. It was great I know. getting together like this. I know. What a great day God gave us, so. Thank you. Thank you. When Bedford launched AquaChem, it didn't take long before it became the number one selling holding tank treatment for over 50 years, until now. Meet Aquamax, Thetford's new generation of holding tank products that works even better and are also campground friendly and environmentally safe. Looks like a new number one is taking over. For more information, visit Thetford.com. Want more RVing today? Then visit RVingToday.tv. Besides our weekly show and extended segments, you'll find additional stories and videos along with insightful information on what's new and what's happening around the world in RVing. From luxury RVs to unique camper vans and from RVing with pets to RVing with kids, you'll find it all and more in RVingToday.tv. Well, there's very few days as exciting as the first day that you bring home your new or slightly used trailer. This one is a 1996 Kit Road Ranger. The owner, Dan Mountjoy, has been going around and doing a little bit of inventorying on it to find out what has to be done to it. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's new or used, there's things that you're going to have to do to a trailer before you take it out for your first run. You got to check the safety things, you got to check the functions, make sure everything's working like it's supposed to, make sure all the parts are there and up to date. And that's what we're going to do with this trailer. We're going to go through it and show you just some of the most important things that we have to do. We aren't going to cover all the, the interior fabric and curtains and all that stuff. Mainly, we're going to be looking at things relating to safety and mobility because it doesn't much matter if the refrigerator works if you can't get the trailer to the campground and back safely. So we're going to take a look at those things and see what it takes and go through the process of getting this little guy ready to go. The propane connection equipment on this is definitely original to the 1996 model. Uh, this is the pre 
uh, you know, easy hand wheel removal ones. So we've got a pair of these guys that we're going to install to replace these. And we also have a new auto changeover regulator. Uh, this is uh, this original one is an older style. Uh, it may or may not still work, but frankly, as old as it is, it's just not worth it to try and make this work. We can add one of these and it'll be good to go for a long time. We removed the cylinders to clear up access to the plumbing parts. The old regulator came off easily, but we needed washers to make the old screws fit the new model due to slightly shallower mounting holes. After removing the optional adapter fittings, the new Acme handwheel equipped hoses screw into the new regulator. The red substance is thread sealer factory pre-applied to the fittings. After assembling the parts, we cracked open the tank valve and checked for leaks with the soapy water solution. We only found one fitting that needed to be tighter. This completed the propane supply part of our once over. Next up was inspecting the brakes and associated hardware and repacking the bearings. After safely supporting the trailer frame with jack stands, we broke the lug nuts loose, raised the trailer a bit farther, and finished removing the wheels. While the brakes are used and rusty inside, the components are still functional, so we brushed the assembly out and left it as is for now. Both the bearing races and seal surfaces looked good. After repacking the wheel bearings, probably our most important step in the trailer work process, we reassembled the unit with new grease seals, torqued the castle nut to spec, and carefully tapped the dust cap in place with a soft mallet. We'll check the lug nuts again after a few miles on the road. It takes a while for them to fully seat and remain tight. There's something else kind of interesting we learned while messing around with the wheel bearings. The tires show an awful lot of tread. They seem to be in pretty good shape from a tread standpoint. But when we inspect the DOT numbers here on the sidewall, According to the numbers, this tire was manufactured in the 19th week of 1995. It's a 1996 trailer, so it's quite possible these are the original tires from the trailer. And to say that they have passed their age of use uh, is tremendously understating it. Plus, if you look really close here, besides the fact that they have that the age indicates they're too old, you check out the sidewall here and the cracking and corrosion on the rubber is really pretty incredible. So uh, stop at the tire shop. That's going to solve another major problem for uh, mobility on this trailer. Before we head for the tire shop is the right time to get the weight distributing hitch properly set up. This process works best on a flat level surface, but we may do with our slightly sloped gravel driveway. Ideally, we want the hitch head adjusted so the truck and trailer are parallel or more or less in line with each other. Okay, item number one on adjusting a weight distributing hitch like this is to set the truck and the trailer more or less at the static ride height where you'd like them to be when they're going down the road. Now, both of them are sitting fairly level here. We've adjusted the, the, uh, the hitch jack until the trailer you know, looks pretty good cosmetically relative to the truck and it's a little tough to measure on a, uh, a rough surface like this but we'll start by inserting the jack or insert the head in there do a test fit on it and see how it looks and then if we have to adjust it up and down we can work from there. We removed the two large mounting bolts and positioned the head up one hole in the mount. This produced the kind of truck and trailer alignment we wanted but further adjustments may be needed after a test drive. Next, we cleaned and installed the spring bars and attached the chains to the frame mounted hangers. The bars must be tight enough to distribute the hitch weight, but not so tight that they stiffen the ride. You'll need to adjust the chain hangers with trial and error. Once it's set right, you're good. Next up, a stop at the tire shop right after these commercial messages. Stay tuned. From off 
off-the-road adventure camping to luxurious full-time RVing and everything in between. Forest River has the RV to fit your needs, budget, and outdoor lifestyle. To see our full line of trailers and motorhomes, visit forestriverinc.com. Forest River, begin the journey. At Norcole, we realize that some of your favorite RV destinations are off the grid. And Norcole refrigerators are uniquely designed with that RV experience in mind. We call it Freedom Unplugged. To learn more about our Norcole RV refrigerator line or to find a dealer near you, visit our website at norcole.com. Let's continue our look at making a few modifications and adjustments to a used travel trailer to get it ready for life on the road. Next stop, a visit to a tire shop to get some new Goodyear Endurance trailer tires installed. Final step of our project today. We're here at Lewis's Tire Service in Oregon City, Oregon to install a new set of Goodyear Endurance radial tires. These are Goodyear's brand new trailer tires designed specifically for trailer use. Now these are made in the United States, so it's none of that imported tire stuff that you see on a lot of products. In fact, it's kind of a testimony to the original Goodyear tires that were on this trailer for in excess of 20 years that we made it all the way down here to the shop without the tires going bad on us. We'll show you what we're going to be doing, including balancing the tires. Very important step. As you're going about your regular maintenance procedures with your trailer, always remember to have your trailer tires balanced. Now there's nobody riding in the trailer to feel if it's vibrating or shaking all over the place. However, with the tires balanced, you get a couple of significant advantages. One, there's a lot less vibration transmitted through the axle, the bearings, and up into the body of the trailer. It rides smoother. And number two, the tires will last a lot longer. Instead of bouncing along the ground because they're out of balance, they're going to ride smoothly. The tread has a better contact with the ground. So keep it in mind. Balance your tires in your trailer. They'll last longer. You'll never regret the investment. One of our wheels had more lateral runout than it should, so it required more weight in excess of six ounces to help it run true. The other tire and wheel combo was fine and called for approximately two ounces to balance. When you get new tires for the trailer, for the ones that are on the ground, don't forget the spare, because if you got a bad tire on the spare and you get a flat, you're taking a risk. Add the extra tire to your purchase, you won't go wrong. The new endurance tires look great on the trailer. And when we selected the size to use for the trailer, we bumped up one size from ST205 75R14 up to ST215 75R14. Now the 215 tires are a little bit larger diameter, a little bit wider, but they fit the opening just fine. They fit the wheels, obviously, and they, they don't contact the wheel well. There's plenty of clearance around here. The advantage to jumping up one size like this is that the new tires have approximately 200 pounds of extra payload capacity per tire. Or in other words, we have another 400 pounds of weight carrying capacity for, for the entire trailer on the axle. Now this doesn't change the gross axle weight rating on the trailer. It just means we have a little, little room to spare, a little bit of wiggle room as far as piling things into the trailer. And there's less chance that we're gonna be overloading the tire. However, these are the new endurance radials, so uh, we have a lot more confidence in these tires than we do on some of the, oh, imported ones that you see running around on the road today. It's a pretty smart investment for a trailer. With the tires good to go, brake lights checked, and the rest of the projects done on the trailer, it's ready to hit the road for the new camping season. A day or two of small projects can make a big difference in keeping things together and trouble-free en route to your favorite campsites. Buying a used trailer, you're always going to wind up with a certain amount of things that have to be done to it. If you're very lucky and you get one that's a turnkey operation, terrific. Otherwise, you may wind up with an older rig like this. It needs a little bit of help along the way. 
Once it gets done, of course, then you can be ready for relatively smooth RV sailing and head out for your first weekend knowing that you can get there and things are going to be safe. Want more RVing today? Then visit RVingToday.tv. Besides our weekly show and extended segments, you'll find additional stories and videos along with insightful information on what's new and what's happening around the world in RVing. From luxury RVs to unique camper vans, and from RVing with pets to RVing with kids, you'll find it all and more in RVingToday.tv. When Bedford launched AquaChem, it didn't take long before it became the number one selling holding tank treatment for over 50 years. Until now. Meet Aquamax, Thetford's new generation of holding tank products that works even better and are also campground friendly and environmentally safe. Looks like a new number one is taking over. For more information, visit Thetford.com. Calaveras Big Trees State Park. The scenic splendor here is incredible. Giant redwood and sequoia trees, wonderful hiking trails throughout the park, a great campground. It's a nice place to spend some time. Calaveras Big Trees State Park is located just three miles north of Arnold, California on Highway 4. The park is a magnificent display of the largest tree species alive today. The giant sequoia, closely related to the coastal redwood, is well named because it's big and it's the largest living organism on the planet. A quiet walk among these sun-dappled glades can soothe the soul and awaken the senses to this superb part of the natural world. Time spent casually wandering here is time well spent. A full-featured visitor center is on site to answer any questions about the facility. Tourist visits started here about 1850 and the park is as popular as ever today. Well-maintained trails and boardwalks make for easy walking access. There are numerous trails of varying difficulty, including wheelchair accessible, located throughout the park. Handy trail guides are keyed to numbered posts along the way so visitors can match the guide information to trailside features. The Big Stump, for example, was once used as a dance floor during the mid-1800s. The original tree was more than 280 feet tall and the stump was close to 25 feet wide. One group of trees includes a laid-back bench for comfortable treetop viewing. A fun walking path leads through the center of one of the fallen giants. It's definitely cooler in here on a warm day. The park's two campgrounds feature 120 sites. Many are tent only, but there's also room for RVs up to 30 feet long. Plan on making reservations well ahead of a visit. You can watch the full uncut version of many of these stories along with other additional videos, stories, and news on our website at rvingtoday.tv. This has been another fun production. If you're into RVing or just appreciate vintage vehicles, be sure to set your GPS for the RV MH Hall of Fame in Elkhart, Indiana. This museum houses the largest collection of vintage RVs and trailers dating as far back as 1916. For more information, visit their website at rvmhhalloffame.org.